So the uh, left-wing, feminist-leaning, everything's racist-leaning online uh, website Salon decides to write an article called The Right's Twisted Symbol, John Wayne and Conservatives Lost Dignity. Here's the problem with the title alone. John Wayne, yes, he was conservative, but he wasn't what some conservatives are today. Far different. In fact, John Wayne should be what conservatives should inspire to be. Someone who just identified as American, didn't let his political leanings control who he was, and just let everybody live a life they want to without, you know, having a say in someone's personal life because being a true patriot, being a true American, is letting people do what the fuck they want to and without telling them that it's wrong because of this reason and that reason. He had criticisms for the hardcore left, but guess what? Did he tell them to stop protesting Vietnam? No. So John Wayne should be exactly what conservatives should inspire to fucking be. Don't bring John Wayne into this shit. Now let's get in... Now, now, basically, they're trying to make a dead man look like he's the leading cause of bad conservatism today. Fuck you, okay? Let's get into the article. Professional American wrote... Garel Marcus, in John Wayne's listening, he wears the mantle of manifest destiny easily, happy to represent America to the world, to itself, and to himself. Now, look, there's nothing wrong with being happy to be an American. There's nothing wrong with being proud to be an American. There's nothing wrong with that. Hell, I'm a proud American. I don't have to espout it every day, but I know I'm a proud American. Hey, I've had this since I was a kid. It means a lot to me. It's my American Eagle necklace. And guess what? It does mean a lot today. Sorry, it does mean a lot to me. Even still today, I'm a proud American, just like John Wayne was. What's the problem? What's the fucking problem with being a proud American? Seriously, Salon, you're, you're basically saying, oh, it's a problem to say you're happy to be an American. Fuck you. Just fuck you, okay? This is nothing but a hit piece on a dead man. That's all it is. It continues. Exactly. That's a, that explains why John Wayne is the most popular American movie star for decades before his death in 1979 and for years afterward and maybe even today. A poll asking, <clears throat> 1995 poll asking, who's your favorite movie star? Ranked him first ahead of Clint Eastwood, Mel Gibson, Denzel Washington, Kevin Costner. He was the only dead movie star in the top ten. Well, because he was a good actor. Didn't matter if you agreed with his politics or not. He was a good actor. The Searchers. Great fucking movie. True Grit. Fantastic film. Don't tell me John Wayne wasn't a good actor. Because he fucking was. He was a great actor. He's one of my favorite actors too. And I like Clint Eastwood. Kevin Costner's great too. Denzel Washington is good, given the film he's in. So is Mel Gibson. Given the film he's in, both those actors are great. But Clint, but Clint Eastwood, great actor, but he's no John Wayne. Even John Wayne makes Clint Eastwood feel less famous. And that is in the words of Clint Eastwood. But he's people's favorite actor because he's a fucking good actor. Even if people don't agree with his politics, he's a great actor. That's also why John Wayne is the symbol of conservatism. That is to say, white America. As Gary Wills wrote about the big showdown scene in Red River, here was Manifest Destiny on the hoof. You don't know nothing about John Wayne. You just want to make this whole fucking hit piece on a dead man because of his political leanings. That's all you goddamn want to do, Salon. Look, John Wayne 
Yes, he was conservative, but he didn't let the conservative label dictate who he was. John Wayne knew he was an actor. He liked the arts. He liked acting out movies. He liked telling stories. He was a storyteller. He was a proud American. And whenever people asked him about being considered the, lead, the, the symbol of conservatism, he said, I don't concern myself the figurehead of conservatism. I just concern myself an American. In fact, he gave that answer to most interviewers that, that asked him that question. So, no, he didn't think of himself as a symbol of conservatism. Far from it. Far fucking from it. And there are black people who do like John Wayne as well. So, don't tell me only white Americans like him. Because there are more than white people who appreciate John Wayne's, you know, acting skills. Wayne's legend, or more uh, precisely, his screen image means nothing at all to me. Strikes no chord of shared dreams. Okay, whatever. That's you. But to everyone else, John Wayne's screen image, you know, hits a chord with people. Bogart lived my unlived lives, and Bogie's world and Duke's world didn't even intersect. So, Bogart, great actor, Wayne, great actor. Both different worlds, yeah. What's the fucking problem? I like Bogart as well. Which is why I can honestly say that Scott E. Man's John Wayne's The Life and Legend is one of the, of one, is one of the greatest movie star biographies ever written. If someone imperviously to Wayne's persona can enjoy it so much, anyone at all interested in the movie should. Yeah, he was a great actor. And his life, you know, was human. He had his flaws, he had his demons, just like we all do. He had his humanitarian side, like people do. Some people do, let me reiterate that, that some people do. Yeah, he was human. Big deal. E-Man's author of John Ford, Prince the Legend, and Ernest Lubish, Lubish, Laughter in Paradise bios, manages the rare critical feature of appreciating his subject's qualities while maintaining distance. John Wayne's story, he writes, is about many things. It's about construction of an image, the forging of a moment, monumental career that itself became kind of a monument. It's about a terribly shy, tentative boy retaining himself as a man with a command personality of a man who loved family but couldn't sustain a marriage and of great relationships with John Ford that resulted in great films. Like I said, John Wayne was human. He had his insecurities like we all do. Makes him no different. And yes, he had a commanding personality. That's why people like him. Because people could take his acting seriously. He has that personality. Okay, I'm on screen now. Watch, what I, watch me in action. And yes, he didn't really like to talk that much about politics. Sometimes he did when he was forced to, but he really didn't like to talk about it. And yes, he loved family. What's the problem? And John Ford was a great actor, but great director, and he tried acting, but he did one film. It, it didn't get that great critical review. It was a silent movie. It was okay. It was okay. Um, but, but anyway, great director.
And yes, produce a great films. And so that is about 20th century conservatism considered dangerously extreme at the time. That became mainstream in the 21st century. And it is, in short, a life that can only belong to one man. See, that's the thing. John Wayne does not represent conservatism. Never did represent conservatism. John Wayne only represented himself. He represented himself and himself fucking alone. That's who John Wayne represented. Himself. No one else but himself. He didn't speak for other people. He spoke for himself. Other people... His acting strikes a chord with other people. Myself included. You know? There's a scene in The Searchers where... He takes revenge on the Native Americans who um, killed his family or most of his family. And what does he do? He shoots the eyes of a Native American, and so therefore his spirit will be forever lost in the, the desert. And I think about when 9-11 happened, when the Manchester bombing happened, and how much I would like to shoot the eyes of a dead Muslim so their 72 versions could be taken away from them. I could relate to that. You want to get fucking revenge on people like that. When, when they kill your family, you want to get fucking revenge. You want blood. I fucking understand that. Most people understand that, regardless of skin color. Most people want blood if someone murders your family. Or you read about someone's family getting murdered. You want fucking blood. You want revenge. I understand that. Most people understand that. E-Man is certainly right about that. Gable never had the good fortune to latch onto two directors as great as John Ford and Howard Hawks. Yeah, he had great... Clark Gable had great directors. What the fuck are you talking about? Gary Cooper's image had been eclipsed by Wayne's. James Stewart in his heyday as a big film star as Wayne until mid-1960s and far more versatile actor as well in real... Life war hero never allied himself with Manifest Destiny. Neither did John Wayne either. <laughs> Neither did John Wayne. That was his online person. Sorry, his on-screen persona. His on-screen persona. Personally, he didn't like to talk about politics. If you read any biography or any personal story from someone who knew John Wayne and they talk about him. They always say he was never big on politics. He was never big on politics. He never liked to talk, talk about politics. He just liked to talk about family or his life, what was going on. Same thing with James Stewart. Never really liked to talk about politics. His, his, his screen personality, completely different. That's, that's what it is to be a good actor. Your screen personality sometimes overrides your real personality. So when people think of John Wayne, they think of this macho man who... who you know, you know, was the cowboy. That's because it was his screen personality that was larger than life. But his real life, he was, you know, a little bit sensitive. Yeah. People who actually knew John Wayne said, yeah, he was a little bit sensitive on things. So, he liked to keep his private life private. What the fuck's the problem with that? Clint Eastwood, once regarded as the late 20th century version of Wayne, has dropped out of the running. Does anyone expect Clint Eastwood to be America's favorite actor a decade and a half after his death? Gary Wills asked rhetorically in 1997. I don't think it's I don't think Eastwood is as popular as Wayne right now. Eastwood is popular, but Eastwood is no John Wayne. Even Eastwood knows that. Eastwood is Eastwood in a league of his own. Still a great actor, but not John Wayne. Mary and Robert Morrison, not Mary and Michael or Mary and Mitchell, was born on May 26, 1907 to Scottish-Irish parents and 
Muntrest, Iowa, a town of less than 3,000 souls, only two of them black. He never went back, though the Winterset Chamber of Commerce restored the house with period furniture. His parents never got along. His father was amenable, but ineffectual, infectual, and his mother was regarded by many who knew her as a scold. They separated in 1921. By 1914, the family was living in the small town of Palmdale, California, on the edge of the Majova Desert. Look, was John Wayne a racist? That's debatable. Because he did believe in white supremacy. Now that's debatable if he was a racist, because I know Sammy Davis Jr. was a friend of John Wayne as well. And so it's debatable if he was racist, but was he sexist? Oh, definitely. He didn't think women were equal to men. He was sexist, for sure. But he wasn't, but it's debatable that if he was racist. That's debatable. Now, you're basically giving John Wayne's personal life from the beginning okay, for what reason? If anybody wants to read about, you know, John Wayne, they could pick up a book about him. So basically, this is something but one big hit piece about John Wayne and why he was such a problematic person to... No, don't bring John Wayne into this. You know nothing about the guy. I know quite a bit about the dude, okay? I like his movies. I'm a sucker for John Wayne films. I really am. I'm a sucker for westerns. But I do like John Wayne's acting. Put him in a dra dramatic film, he's great. Put him in a western, he's great. John Wayne is a great actor. I may not agree with his, you know, well, I may not agree with a lot of his conservatism. There are some parts of his conservatism beliefs which I don't disagree with. Like, for example, don't tell anyone that they can't do anything. You know, let them do what they want. You know, freedom, democracy, that's what America's about. I agree with that. Most people do agree with that. And that's why I say most conservatives should aspire to be John Wayne in that sense. But, man. But the thing is, though, John Wayne was smart. He wasn't stupid. Now, this is just nothing but a hit piece. Now, in your article, you say, One of his favorite albums was Sinatra's A September of My Years, Mine Too. And it is a good album, I agree. George Plimpton once listened to Wayne recite John Milton from memory. He read Winston Churchill's speeches and in his library had copies of Tolkien's books, and, and this really floored me. Nabokov's Lolita. Maybe he knew that, maybe he knew that Nabokov's politics were similar to his own. Yeah, he was an avid reader. Um, he was, he was once asked about what he thinks about television or what he thinks about watching himself on camera. I forget exactly who asked him this. I think it was either Walter Cronkite or Edward R. Murrow, one of them. But it was a big news anchor. And he said, 
I would rather read more books in the day than watch myself on television or on the screen. He was an avid reader. Yeah, like I say, he wasn't stupid. He was very smart. And uh, you also put in here, there are great stories as the time Wayne ran into Michael Kane in the lobby of the Beverly Hills Hotel and pointed a finger at him and says, what's your name, Michael Kane? That's right. I saw you in that movie. What's it called? Alfie. That's right. Wayne put his arms around Kane and told him he was going to be a star and gave him some advice. Talk low, talk slow, don't say too fucking much, and never wear suede shoes. Why not? Because one day, I was taking a piss, and the guy in the next stall next to me turns towards me and said, John Wayne, you're my favorite actor, and pissed over my suede shoes. So don't wear them when you're famous, kid. Yeah, he was giving him advice, and in fact... He took that advice to heart, and Michael Caine doesn't speak that much, or doesn't give that many interviews. He took John Wayne's advice. And he never had more suede shoes since. Look, John Wayne liked to help other people out, regardless of skin color. Now... Like I said, when I said it's debatable that he could have been racist, but, but this article says he once used the N-word with Roscoe Lee Brown telling him, using other words, that he was the first black man he met with a sense of humor. But when but he refused to make an appearance in Mel Brooks's Blazing Souths because, quote, I can never be in a movie that used the N-word. His favorite actors were Cary Grant, Barry Fitzgerald, Victor McLeod, and James Gardner, Robert Refford, and George C. Scott. He, admired, he also admired Paul Newman, with whom he exchanged jesting letters on politics. I'm with every name on that list. See, that's the thing. You know, he really didn't like to talk about politics, but when he did, you know, he's forced to. And situations, Paul Newman is, and so, sorry, was very political. Paul Newman was very political, and him and John Wayne did, yeah, it's true. They did spar over politics. But the thing is, though, so what? His favorite actors were them. Big deal. And look, he was smart for not doing Blazing Saddles. I'll tell you why. Because you don't need that type of vulgarity in movies. Even though I love Blazing Saddles, it's one of my favorite Mel Brooks films, but you don't need that type of vulgarity in movies all the time. And John Wayne... Knew that. Even though, yes, he used the N-word, but he didn't use it all the time. Once they said, you know, it's debatable that he was racist or not. So this is, you know... Nothing but, you know, you know, 
This is nothing but... How do I put it? This is nothing but a hit piece about John Wayne telling about his life and why he's such a problem. Man, this is article so fucking dumb. So goddamn fucking dumb. John Wayne's not the problem here. In fact, he would be appalled by the Republicans that did support Roy Moore. He would be appalled by it. Ronald Reagan would be appalled by it. Most conservatives would be fucking appalled by it. Ben Crosby would be appalled by it. So, you know, don't bring John Wayne into this. He's not guilty. Hope you guys enjoyed this article. Well, me reading this article and Tony White. So, bullshit. See ya.